Whether you keep them in your home or love to see them in theirs, these are the creatures that bring us all together. Reptiles. Reptiles. We're going to be delving into the experiences of reptile lovers from around the block and around the world. This is the Reptile Talk Podcast. Boom. What is going on, everybody? This is Jeremy Turgeon from Brass Man Reptiles. And I'm Rob, and I'm creeping it real. Hey. So uh, we're here to uh, to talk about what happened yesterday at the uh, North Carolina Zoom meeting for a bunch of different things. But, uh, of course, we, we, we care about the tegu ban, uh, which uh, the tegu ban, the native species importation permit system, and uh, yep. the, the native turtle uh regulating it's, changes regulation changes yeah, yeah it, it's uh it's pretty pretty wild I'm, I'm a little flabbergasted at uh the amount of time that they allotted for us as opposed to some of the other things that were on the docket yeah absolutely absolutely i, I think it's uh definitely sorry the cat came into my room <laughs> um so, <clears throat> yeah, it was very frustrating. So I was driving, so I was only able to, to listen. And uh, I did have my, my quote-unquote hand raised on Zoom uh, to be able to speak. But they definitely did not give us uh, a whole lot of time to talk. And they also would not answer questions. Yeah, um, yeah that was a big drag because they didn't – they didn't say at the beginning that they are not answering questions. Um, they said it was open public comment and that if you had questions, you could ask them. And for some of the other rulings or the other things that were on the docket before the tegus and the, the native species stuff, they were answering questions. Yeah, it seemed uh, like they, they as long as it was really simple, it could be answered in yeah. one sentence or less. Yeah, either yes answer. or no. Yeah. Right. So that was certainly uh, certainly frustrating. And we'll kick this off. Anybody anybody who is interested and would like to uh, super chat, send a super chat. They're more than welcome to do so. Uh, so shout out to Derek Reptiles with, for the super sticker. We appreciate that, man. Thank you. Um, yeah. So, <clears throat> uh, yeah, so it was definitely frustrating. Um you know, and uh, I, I think none none were more frustrated than than probably Josh Ortiz, who we uh, we had on last week. Uh, he got on there and and just laid down the science uh, as far as uh, the tegus uh, being a non-issue of invasiveness, uh, and asked them asked the committee why uh, all these were being brought up. You know, um, mm. and they they didn't answer him, and then yep. they cut him off from continuing yep. to speak. Uh, which is certainly a problem. And I'm hoping that was because they were not expecting something like that to come up to their attention. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, certainly not, not wonderful. Um, and then you got to speak, hey. <laughs> um, which was great. And, uh, and then uh, Amanda, I, I don't remember her last name, but uh, one of the zoo worker, or whatever also also yep. spoke she's a herpetologist really, yep. yes and and seemed like she really really kind of crushed it <laughs> um mm -hmm. you know and, and dropped some some helpful information um so yeah i have mixed feelings very much mixed feelings about uh what went on i'm i'm actually happy north carolina residents showed up so, yes. so thank you to everybody that was on the on the chat uh, or on the zoom meeting in the chat um, you know, again, I was driving. So when I got back home, I probably had like three dozen messages from people who were like, I can't believe they stopped public comment. This is terrible. You know, so I appreciate yep. everybody who was there and involved. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, so definitely, definitely a massive, uh, problem. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Christina Hill with, with the super chat. Thank you. We, uh, we appreciate that. We're here for the long haul. We want to help. We want to help out. You know, we're here. Yeah. We're residents now, too. And I'm planning on being in North Carolina for a while. So <laughs> yeah. this is this is directly, you know, I don't keep tegus. I don't plan on keeping tegus. But any sort of, uh, you know, nick in our ability to keep reptiles is going to affect all of our ability to keep reptiles. So I show up right. for everything. I don't care what it is. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
So I, I will say, uh, after they shut down public comment for the wildlife management section of the meeting, I uh, immediately spoke with uh, with Phil Goss. Um, he, he called me pretty much right after. Um, and, of course, was frustrated that he didn't get the chance to speak. But uh, I, I'm not sure how they were working the queue and uh, how they were figuring out who was raising hands or dialing the, the, the number to get in the start yeah. to get in. Um, so that's uh, that's certainly frustrating. You know, obviously, we, we would have loved to have Phil speak on our behalf. Um, you know, I was frustrated that I didn't get to speak, but I was also just sitting in a car. So <laughs> inevitably, I was going to be doing the same thing regardless. <laughs> so, um, you know, but my I, I so again, amazing that North Carolinians showed up. Um, I think that that obviously was huge, uh, especially in comparison to like South Carolina that saw less than 10 people show up for their uh, tegu, uh, their tegu band for the black and white tegu. So uh, yeah. great that North Carolina showed up. Uh, great that we had a couple of really solid speakers. Um, what was not wonderful and didn't necessarily help us uh, was the fact that people some of the people that did speak clearly did not read the proposals. So, yeah. you know, obviously the Tegu ban is the, the most intense thing that we wanted to focus on, you know. Um, but the fact that we were being represented in, in statements, uh, you know, where we don't, we don't agree with an import, a native species importation ban. It was never proposed as a ban. <laughs> It yeah. was proposed as a permitting system. And <clears throat> for anybody that's unaware, the, the same requirements are uh, required for birds, native birds and native mammals in the state of North Carolina. You need an importation yeah. permit to bring native birds and mammals into the state. So they were elevating that need with repti native reptiles and native amphibians. So that was the justification of the state. They were trying to bring everything up to an equal level as far as uh, importation goes. Um, mm -hmm. so <clears throat> the, the problem with that is when it's misrepresented, uh, when, when the people who are opposing it are talking about it, when it's a constant, you know, mis misunderstanding, those uh -huh. committee members just kind of get glazed over and they're like, well, you didn't read this. You know, this is, you're not paying attention. You're not paying attention. You're not paying yeah. attention. So it doesn't really help us, um, you know, because they glaze over for it. Uh, the, the native turtle regulation change, um, was really circled around the commercial take of, uh, of native animals, you know, going out capturing native species. Um, you know, that, that was on the, uh, as far as the list of three issues we were fighting, probably on the lowest level of concern, you know, a mm -hmm. lot of these native turtles, like we don't they're they're obviously they're either worked well enough in captivity or there's a large enough sustainable population in captivity thanks to other people that are collecting them in other states where they don't necessarily need to be taken from all these different locations um mm. so not necessarily the the most important thing although it was obvious that people were upset that that was being proposed as well um so the other thing that does does us no good <coughs> or that did us no good really was uh the over the top discussion of you know the of the same point being made you know so so Josh came Josh was one of the first people to speak uh and brought up all these all the science you know around the different tegu species and temperatures and blah 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 great and then it seemed that everybody else was coming in with the same you know the same topic and, you know, at some point, especially when we realize, like, we have two minutes to speak, right? So we really need to get the point across and whatever. That's when you need to be willing to pivot a little bit and say, I'd like to echo the comments, you know, presented by previous people who also oppose this bill regarding tegus not being able to survive in our climate. And then move on. It doesn't need to be reiterated a thousand times, especially when we have other people that need to speak. Um because, again, the, it's just it becomes in one ear, out the other, you know, if you're not proposing anything new. Um, I was also shocked that less was brought up about uh, 
the native species importation um, because it would seriously affect. There's a lot of reptile businesses uh, here in North Carolina, which is awesome. Um, but it wasn't really brought up that for those pet stores uh, that exist here, um, if they wanted to source corn snakes or rat snakes or eastern king snakes or anything like that from an out-of-state vendor, it would be that much harder for them to do it. Granted, more expensive. And more expensive. You know, and, and granted, it, it did sound tone-wise when the uh, representative of the committee spoke about it not being a ban and, and that it was just, you know, altering the, the status of regulation uh, for the uh, for native reptiles and amphibians sounded in in his tone like it wouldn't be that big of a deal and you could easily get it. You know, they're just trying to uh, make the make the status of reptiles and amphibians equal to that of mammals and birds as far as what they require for importation. But it's yeah. one extra hoop. Yeah. Uh, um, so that that's a big one. That also in tandem is. <clears throat> uh, the same for reptile expos vendors who are coming yep. out of state if they want to bring corn snakes rat snakes or eastern king snakes you know so that was something that was missed um mm -hmm. you know that that didn't come up and and those are kind of some some key points that we really needed to to get to them and just be like hey there's there's a lot more people bringing in corn snakes than there are people bringing in you know mam native mammals and native birds and, and stuff like that so we yep. might see 20 permits for the mammals and and birds for an entire year you're actually probably looking at hundreds um if not more throughout the year with the with the reptiles and amphibians um, see my issue with that is that they might be looking at that being like oh we could be making a whole bunch of extra money with all these extra people who have to be applying for permits or we can find them and then they're making more revenue right then it, then it also goes to you know if they want to establish that permit system how is that going to be executed and how Enfor are they going to ensure yep. that it gets enforced, you know? Yeah. Uh, because I, I can guarantee you, you know, like unless there's a newsletter going out to strictly or reptiles by Mac or any of those big wholesalers, you know, they're, they're just gonna be like, Oh, you know, corn snakes, here's your corn snakes, you know, yep. like no big, no big deal, you know? Yeah. Um, cause they, they're not, there's so many aware. States. They, there's no way that any of those wholesalers can know every single state's, individual statutes right and then also would it would it mean that if i was to take corn snakes from here to south carolina to a show would i also need that document bring them to back bring them back how does probably that, how does probably that if you're coming from if you're coming from outside of the state into the state you would probably need some sort of importation paperwork right even though they're already in my possession currently in the state. exactly these are the things these are the things that were not really discussed so yeah um so, yeah, so uh, I want to hit another super chat that was thrown in here. Natalie's reptiles is here, Natalie. Um, at least all the comments in the Zoom was against the ban. That is another one of the good points for sure, is that there was nobody that spoke that was in favor uh, of the proposed regulation, which is definitely, definitely a great thing um, yep. for sure. Uh, so also there's there was a lot of people who messaged me later as far as uh, the number of species uh, native species that people are allowed to to keep uh, in in captivity because it sounded like that it sounded like it was not totally understood that just for clarification for anybody who may have missed it it was uh, four native species native species not just four species of reptiles in general but four native species uh, was was so the, like if you've got four corn snakes you're okay if you have five corn snakes on the other hand uh, you need a permit. Uh, to have those five corn snakes or any number past five. Uh, uh, but it's aggregate. So if you have two corn snakes and a spotted turtle and a marbled salamander, you're okay. You get another marbled salamander, that means five species that are native to the state. Now you need the permit, which is kind of kind of stupid, in yeah, my it's, opinion. It's, yeah, know. exactly. Exactly. And that's. Yeah, native species possession permits are – it's very bizarre that they have it yeah. in aggregate. But these are these are also things that, again, are not easily found, you know, and unless you're aware of, you know, state regulations, uh, you wouldn't know that this was a thing, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, 
you know, so native species uh, possession and propagation permit, that's something I need for my corn snakes and stuff because I have a dozen corn snakes, you yeah. know, or whatever. <laughs> um, again, overall seems like a very easy thing to, to obtain because we're not talking about a permit to go out and collect, field collect animals and, yeah. a, you know, a certain number, a certain quota. But, um, but yeah, so it's, it's, it was, uh, frustrating to say the least um <coughs> you know um again there was some good that existed but there was a lot of uh, a lot of stuff that was missed and then we got cut off uh yeah. you know then they closed public comment because uh they they wanted to keep it within a two hour uh a two hour period two hour window for the zoom hearing um and then that was it so the one quote unquote good thing about that uh being cut off is that they realized that they'd be there for a long time if they yep. kept taking people's calls so again kudos to everybody that showed up that raised their hand that wanted to speak um it also sounded like there were a bunch of people that had audio issues yes. um you know some they were calling names and and numbers for people that and just getting no response and a lot of people were like you know oh, my audio is not working and um, all the stuff, which is uh, the downside of, of doing the Zoom meetings when that stuff happens. Yep. Um, I bet you it had to do with the volume too, with it, because Zoom is designed more for, you know, five, 10 people. There was probably, you know, if I had to guess, I'd say there's probably 50 or 60 people watching at least, because not even just counting us, you know, I mean, 50, 60 of our people, not counting all the other people who are there for the, for the bear stuff and all the other right. things. Um, and, and it's crazy because, um, initially there was supposed to be three in-person meetings that would run two hours as well as the one zoom meeting, which would run another two hours. So that's two, four, six, eight, eight hours worth of meeting. that got cut down to two hours. That's not just for the tegus, not just for the turtles, not just for native right. species. It also had squirrel hunting and bear hunting and bear sanctuaries and all this other stuff that was not us um striper like whatever bass fishing or whatever mm -hmm. um so they cut down those number of meetings and they didn't really give us an alternative to continue to give our comment uh besides the online comment you can still submit online comments if you're listening to this concurrently uh uh, January 2022, you can submit online comments via email or through uh, the North Carolina Wildlife Resources uh, Commission website. Uh, you can do it. They have an online form on their website, or you can email them uh, your comments until January 31st, 2022. Um, so if you are listening to this right now, if you're on our YouTube, if you are listening to this as it comes out, um, you can still make a comment for the next week and a half or whatever it is. Yep. Uh, but on January 31st, that's it. No, they're not allowing any more public comment. Uh, at least that's that's how it looks for the time being. Right, right, exactly. Um, that also means, uh, at least likely means, we're not going to hear anything else about this until after public comment has closed. Yes. Um, so it means we have to we have to hang tight a little bit. Um, give a shout out to Timothy for the super chat. It says U.S. Ark. That's right. Yeah. We want to be protecting U.S. Ark. So. Um, so again, I spoke to Phil directly after, uh, they closed public comment and, um, he's, he was obviously frustrated, um, frustrated at some of the, the points that I brought up about certain things not being spoken about and part mostly because other people didn't know enough to talk about it. You know, again, the Tegus were the, the biggest one that we were pushing obviously, cause that had the most detriment. Um, yeah. But we uh, we we missed a, f a few other things. So uh, Phil's obviously headed out to California for the Pomona Super Show that's going on this yep. weekend. Um, but while he's there, he'll be working on U.S. Arc's uh, comments uh, that will be submitted before the 31st. Um, and he and I are going to reconvene before those get submitted. Um, and Rob and I will also be submitting uh, our comments separately. Um, yep. in also in an effort to hopefully be able to speak with some of the committee members um, directly uh, to to try to figure out something uh, or yeah. make sure that they make the right decisions in a, in a, and are more educated as they move forward. Um, 
you know, because again, the, the proposal on the tegus, it's a fear of invasiveness. And scientifically, that's not plausible in the state. It's just, it's not. You know, there's the, uh, in the, the paper that Josh was talking about last week, and, and he spoke about it at length last week, you know, where there's the potential sliver of the southernmost coast uh, of North, North Carolina where uh, Argentine black and whites could potentially um, survive, not necessarily establish or thrive, but survive. Um, you know, but again, that does not constitute uh, enough proof to do a statewide ban. Yeah. And I I wish we had a little bit more time just to talk. I mean, I know almost all the states that I've been to, they only give you two minutes to talk, which is a a bummer. Um, But I feel like I could have hit at least a few more things if if I had had another minute or something, you know. Yeah. But that's that's the hardest thing. I was also upset that we couldn't see how many people were in the room. Yeah. And I've made a they have a question and answer section on the Zoom meeting where you could submit a question and they'll like type an answer to you. And I asked how many people were in the queue who didn't get to talk and they did not answer me. They did not give me an answer to that. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, it was definitely pretty, pretty frustrating. Um, Yeah. So in the meantime, we uh, we have to kind of sit tight public comment ends as rob said on the 31st of this month uh yeah. so in the meantime we want people to continue to send those emails make those phone calls uh you know again you can send us has all the info right on their homepage of north carolina action alert you've got all the info there including the sample letter for the email it's just copy paste uh, yep. and you can you make it personal it. Yeah. a little personal yeah yeah exactly you can add your own bit to make it a little more personal um, so we need to get that. We need to get as many of those in as, as we possibly can. Um, you know, cause that's, that now is, is essentially our, our last, hope. our last ditch. Yeah. Uh, uh, unless we can either fill or, or one of us is able to, uh, sit down and speak, um, with someone from the committee or with the committee as a whole, uh, before they move forward, you know, the, yep. the, the public comment is really the most important thing. So again, it is important. Uh, utilize that US ARC letter that's already pre-made because it does it, it hits on all of the major talking points that we need to be hitting. Um, and if, if you're going to send your own comments um, parallel with that, then you know make sure you're you're covering the gambit. You know not you know the tegus are obviously important. We want to make sure that they don't get banned for you know for uh, out of fear. Um, you know, without any actual scientific proof, you know, when that burden of proof is on the state to prove that they are uh, a potential issue. Um, but to discuss, you know, the native species importation paperwork permits, mm-hmm. um, you know, that it, it would make pet stores, you know, have a, a challenge getting certain animals in, you know, um, people who travel for the trade shows all these things w- that just did not get thought about, you know, um, mm-hmm. and, and we didn't get to speak on enough. Uh, you know, again, if you were also opposed to, I think it was, uh, what H four, which was the, the native turtles, you know, regulation change for, for what can and can't be, uh, used for commercial take. If you're opposed to that, you know, mention, mention something about that as well. Um, you know, but, uh, yeah. So the public comment is, you know, our last ditch, you know, effort to, to get them to be aware of, of our opposition and, and why. Yep. Yeah. And I've been trying to share some of that information around to get people involved. I shared information for the Zoom meetings on a couple of the North Carolina reptile groups. Um, I've been posting about it on my own personal Facebook page. And I'm making those posts public so that anyone can see them, not just people who are friends with me on Facebook. Um sharing it where Jeremy and I have been sharing it on our Instagrams, trying to make sure on our Instagram stories, make sure that people are informed when they can submit, how they can submit and all that sort of stuff. Cause some people do get confused when they go to us arts website, even though the alerts right there, it says North Carolina right on it. Um, some people just need that little extra babying, um, to, to get them to that point. So that's what we're going to try and do. Um, and just try and make sure that we're still hitting all those points uh, to make sure that everyone's involved because, like Jeremy mentioned, we are here for – we just picked up our lives 
from <laughs> from the <laughs> other part of the country and implanted them here. We're not trying to have them end, you know, our livelihoods here or, or the things that we're passionate about, you know. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, in tandem with, with this discussion, I, I want to give a shout out to, of course, US Arc. We want to make sure that we're always supporting US Arc. But I will also say uh, and want to shout out to US Arc Florida, um, who's also, you know, they they are uh, fighting for everything that's going on in Florida. They're, ta- they're taking on the, the lawsuit uh, against all the FWC craziness, and, uh, and they need our support as well. You know, uh, we need to remember that what happens in Florida uh, certainly will affect us uh, as, as time goes on. So we want to make sure that we're uh, always looking out for our friends down in Florida. Um, and however we can be involved in helping them with whatever they need, you know, the better. Obviously, Daytona, the Daytona uh, NAR, or NRBE uh, raises a bunch of money at that auction. Um, you know, it goes to U.S. Arc and uh, usually they usually also do something for U.S. Arc Florida. But we just want to make sure that we're giving them attention to, you know, obviously U.S. Arc being the national organization gets so much attention. Uh, but U.S. Arc Florida is just as uh, valuable and important. So if you're following U.S. Arc, please go check out U.S. Arc Florida as well and uh, and give them some support <clears throat> as well. Even if it's just sharing, uh, sharing their Instagram, sharing their Facebook info. Uh, just to help spread the word for that as well, because it is definitely important. Um, you know, and again, we want to realize like the the seriousness of of what the North Carolina tegu ban proposal is is coming from. It's you know, Florida's banned tegus, South Carolina's banned black and white tegus. You know, Georgia is potentially could do something because they're right in between. You know. Uh, now North Carolina is bringing this proposal in. You know, this is creeping up the southeast, you know. Um, and uh, I'm seeing somebody in the comments saying Alabama has banned them too, you know. so this Yeah, is- Alabama did, did a crazy ban last year. It's, it's, like, ridiculous. Yeah, and part of that was – uh, part of the reason for that was there was very little uh, attendance from what it sounds like. Um from from people in opposition you know um it's it's a massive massive issue for sure um shout out natalie one more time with another super chat um we definitely appreciate that natalie she says yep you guys are rock stars we definitely appreciate that natalie you you're crushing it over there as well um we definitely appreciate everything that you're doing for us arc so and i'm i'm reading the comments and seeing the comments we definitely appreciate everybody's support uh, for the podcast and everything that's been going on, uh, it really does mean a lot to us. Um, you know, we, we want to, again, keep you guys as informed as possible. Uh, that's why I bother Phil to make sure we get him on a few times during the year and, uh, you know, and have these discussions with you guys. Because, you know, I also saw there were quite a few people who, you know, felt like the meeting was good. And, uh, you know, it, it wasn't the worst meeting that I've ever attended. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but it, it definitely could have been better um and from from two levels you know from the level of you know we we could have had more people speaking if they didn't shut us shut us down yeah. and uh we also need to be aware that when we're we've got us arc at our fingertips take that take that 15 minutes to make sure you read everything that's going on take notes highlight it you know, something just so that you're as aware and as in the know as possible. Um, we appreciate that. Let me make sure I say this right. Karmic God with the super sticker. We appreciate that, man. Thank you. Um, but yeah, so uh, public comment till the end of this month. Uh, Phil will be uh, working on the um, working on the, the public uh statement for us arc and then uh yeah hopefully we can get <coughs> um we can get some people to just make make an impact make an impact mm-hmm. hey all right uh, okay i get it i i see now i gotta i gotta shout this man out kb what's good bro so i just met kb uh down in georgia this week he came in and and uh he, he snagged he snagged a fire nerd ball python oh, man Sweet. <laughs> um 
yeah he's a, he wants to wants to start working with reptiles and um and one of the few people that's put their money where their mouth is to make a, a substantial investment to uh to to pursue a dream so shout out to you kb appreciate you bro um <clears throat> but uh but yeah so uh a lot of important oh. stuff is going on there's obviously we still have uh the national traveling ban traveling animal act ban uh proposal that's uh yep. that is ongoing uh so we want to be aware of that and uh moving forward uh we uh, want to be continuously just following us arc uh for their updates if you're not signed up for their newsletter it's free you can go right to us arc's website sign up for that newsletter and then you'll get an email every time there's a new alert uh and anytime there's an update to that alert they send out an email as well um so we really need people to be aware of that you know i've been using the hashtag in the know um so that we can stay aware of everything that's that's going on um and i would suggest doing the same thing for uh for us arc florida as well you know um it is very much important you know uh, i told phil and uh, a few other people down in florida a few other reptile keepers down in florida you know, uh, I have a, a strong vested interest in what happens in Florida because it will impact everyone else in the country. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm, I might be uh, taking a couple trips down to Florida this year to <clears throat> to get involved in some of that stuff because it's, it's just got to it's got to happen. There, there's no no two ways about it, unfortunately. Yep. So. <clears throat> um, but, yeah, so I don't know, Rob, do you have any other any other thoughts? on this um i mean definitely i'm glad that people showed up i wish that we had a little bit more time to talk about things because uh, a couple of people were taking taking note of how long we got to speak they allotted about 20 minutes for uh us to speak on all three of those different regulation changes where the bear sanctuary portion of the meeting got just about an hour of the meeting to talk about all of those things um when i mean i don't know how many more people they had waiting on the line to talk about that it seems like they had a decent amount of people to talk about it but i can <laughs> assure them that we also had a lot of people to to voice their opinions yeah um which makes it seem like maybe they don't really value our opinions as much as they do some of the other things that were on the docket which is unfortunate yeah but um you know, we're really, we're proud of the people who showed up. We're hoping that we'll be able to work with this committee going forward and uh, and show them that we know what we're talking about. And it's really bad for them to just make laws on, you know, no science. There's, there's no real reason. Um, yeah. Because we will become a thorn in their side if we have to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about anybody else, but I will be. <laughs> yeah, no, one hundred percent. And I think it's important also to to note that uh, worst case scenario, if this Tegu ban does get passed, um, that doesn't mean that it's over. Yeah, you know, there's there's still uh, there's still an element of fight Avenues. that's that's left. Uh, they're, they're a lot longer, you know, to to go through, and and it means that we'd have to endure a period of time with those new regulations, uh, but they're not impossible to, uh, have repealed and get overturned. Um, yeah. So if it happens, worst case, it's even more important in those instances to make sure that you're supporting us arc supporting stuff like another shameless plug, the Carolina herpetological society. Um, and or, and those people who are in positions to, again, meet with the people who are in charge uh, of, of these decisions, you know, of making these decisions. Uh, yeah. You know, because, again, the fight will not be over. It just means we have to endure um, a, a length of time with those new regulations. Natalie, one more time, dropping it down. I use your hashtag in the know on all my U.S. Arc uh, US Arc posts. Definitely appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, massive shout out to everybody that's here uh, watching on on uh, YouTube and Facebook. We're also streaming on Facebook. Um, I think this is the 
uh, the YouTube count that's here, but there's uh, just about around 40 or 50 of you that it was kind of moved through, uh, which is great. We definitely appreciate that. Thank you guys for for all the support. This was definitely a, an episode we we wanted to get people uh, in on and, and aware of. So thank you to everybody that's here and hanging out and throwing super chats down and all that great stuff. Yeah. Did you want to roll a uh, an ad out? Yes, I do actually. Sponsor. Sponsor. <laughs> absolutely a sponsor our sponsor right before i do that i just want to touch this comment from gabe how can i join the carolina herpetological society so right now the organization is still very much in its infancy um so uh as we gather things together just go to facebook and look up carolina herpetological society um you'll see a couple posts about uh, some of the episodes that we've done of the podcast and stuff so you know you're on the right spot and, yep. and uh, as of right now, there's no um, we don't have like a membership fee to join just yet. Right. Um, we will be working on some of that sort, sort of stuff as we get together and figure out our finances on that sort of thing, uh, because we will be doing things like sponsored uh, herping trips where yes. um, I'll be taking people out on some of the places that I have found. Um, but we'll get together with people. We want it to be a community. We want it to be, um, you know, an area where people. Uh, people can learn it's accepting of people from all different kinds of you know from really little kids up to people who've been keeping reptiles their whole life maybe we should talk about that for the second half of the episode bam let's do it all right we're going to run this plug to our wonderful sponsor uh black box cages and we'll be back in about 90 seconds black box cages located in buford georgia is your one-stop shop for all of your caging and rack needs Owners Jen and Clint are at the helm of this fantastic company. With one of the shortest lead times in cage and rack manufacturing, Black Box can satisfy anyone's needs. From baby racks to V70s, arboreal and terrestrial caging to deep-fronted bioactive enclosures. You can find everything you need right here. New enclosure sizes and products are added frequently to their availability, so be sure to check back often. Black box cages have tons of customizing options for lighting and heating. Along with that, cages and racks can be stacked with metal stacking dowels, and all cage joints are datoed for improved durability and stability. Most cage units are flat packed, but are pre assembled prior to shipping to ensure a solid build every time. The Micro, XC18, XT3, BioG, and three stack V70 ship assembled and all other racks are shipped freight and assembled. The XR16 and XR20 model racks allow keepers to mix and match tubs. Fitting both Vision and Freedom Breeder tubs, you can mix the V15, V18, and V35S tubs, or the FB5, FB8, and FB35CV SC tubs. This kind of flexibility allows keepers to raise their animals from hatchling to juvenile or sub-adult size before needing to upgrade into adult caging. Don't just take our word for it. Go to their website to see countless customer reviews and review videos from keepers all over. To learn more about Black Box Cages, follow them on Facebook and Instagram at Black Box Cages, and of course their website www.blackboxcages.com. Links to their socials and website will be available in the podcast description. Boom! Shout out to Black Box Cages. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you saw some of my setup photos from uh, some of the wonderful Black Box uh, enclosures that I'm setting up right now for some Amazon tree boas. So, <clears throat> pretty hey. excited. More to come on that. I'll actually be filming, filming a YouTube video, finally, about those cages. So, I'm pretty, pretty excited about that. So, go check them out. Sweet. Links are all in the podcast description. Um so before we talk more about the Carolina Herp Society, I want to bring this up just because it is important. Um, you actually sent me the link uh, a, a moment ago, Rob, and I, and I just saw it. Um, and it's going to get shared around a lot, so there's there's no point to, to wait. Um, yes, I did hear about the uh, unfortunate uh, death of a reptile keeper in Maryland uh, that also had a bunch of venomous snakes that he was keeping illegally. Um, I am aware <coughs> of, uh, of that stuff. Um, I've spoken to some of the people that were involved, um, in making sure those animals were, uh, put in the correct hands. Um, I, I can't say any more than that at, at this time. So, um, definitely condolences to the family of that person. <coughs> um, 
it's also it's also illegal to keep venomous snakes in the state of Maryland. Uh, so that's uh, that's certainly not great. But another thing that we need to be aware of uh, is that could that could make some stuff happen uh, that U.S. Art needs to get involved in. So, uh, okay, talking about the Carolina Herpetological Society. Hey. Uh, <laughs> um, so the idea for CHS uh, started after uh, many discussion between myself and uh, Nick Bettini and, and Rob and, and a few other key people here in the Carolinas. Um, because while we do have um, herb societies that exist out here, they are very much focused on native species uh, and don't necessarily have a whole lot of support for the private sector, people who keep reptiles in their home. Uh, so we wanted to be a resource um, in both states um, for people to have somewhere to go to a learn about laws in their state uh, and b be that resource to get people together build that community of uh, of reptile lovers and uh, and have fun and just overall have fun so we talked about we were talking about things behind the scenes for a while and then uh just a few weeks ago actually right at the beginning of the year we uh made the facebook page live and uh, I will actually be sending a message out right after this podcast uh, for getting the board together <coughs> for the first time in person um, and making some of that wonderfulness happen. <coughs> uh, and then uh, that means hopefully maybe late mid to late spring we can have our first uh, our first meeting. And as time progresses, we'll figure out membership fees and, and all of that wonderful stuff. Uh, so, um, Yeah. So more is coming, Rob. What do we, we want to talk about, Rob? What do you want to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just gonna say I've had a lot of people asking me about the uh, Carolina Herb Society, and uh, and whether or not uh, they are wanting it to be like a North Carolina Arc, um, where I was basically just mentioning to people that uh, I feel like, and, and I'm sure that a couple of the other board members as well feel that, um, you know, U.S. ARC is doing their, their work. And um, when people see an ARC organization, it sometimes feels um, alienating for people who are uh, younger. So people who can't vote, who their voice, their opinion might not be taken seriously by a lot of these legislators. Um uh, they feel they can feel excluded from arcs, the arc grouping and whatever. Um, and herb societies generally are a little bit more inclusive. Uh, people of all ages can feel free to be involved. They usually are based a lot on in education and um, uh, not just educating the members, but also educating the public. Uh, they usually organize meetings where you can go to places like uh, museums of science and, and see their reptile exhibits, um, doing field herping adventures, uh, having guest speakers, having people. So it's, it's, it's largely based on inclusion and then also um, uh, inclusion of people of all ages. And I feel like that's something that's really important. And then it, it gives us a way to disseminate information that's important to the people who will be affected by it. Um, and US ARC is really good at that. Uh, the NCR guys are, are doing that as well. Uh, and the NCR people are doing that as well. Um, but we just felt like uh, North Carolina, South Carolina are very similar in a lot of ways. Uh, our reptile communities are, are often overlap. People coming from one state to the other states, expos and, and all that sort of stuff. A lot of people vend at both North and South Carolina's expos. We have a lot of the similar uh, native species that you can find in North and South Carolina. And so uh, we felt like it was important to have this as a, a way to be welcoming and to educate uh, people in the reptile community. And it kind of gives you a little bit more of a sense of like family because a lot of the arc, um, like uh, a lot of the like Florida arc or NC arc or any of the other ones, uh, when legislation's going on, there's lots of stuff going on. So they've got lots of meetings and lots of stuff, lots of talk going on. And then when things get quiet, if, if the regulations don't involve us for a while, it just kind of dissipates and, and spreads out where a herb society is a more consistent thing, whether or not there's regulations going on or not. Uh, we'll host meetings. We'll do public speakers. Like I said, I'm, I'm looking forward to, um, you know, doing some field herping trips. And that way you can, uh, you know, uh, include a little bit more people and uh, it, it allows us to do a little bit more 
um, in the times where there aren't legislative battles going on. But then when there when there is need for us to organize, it is a good way to say, hey, look, we are a nonprofit. You know, we, we educate. Our goal is to make sure that people handle and work with reptiles safely, blah, 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 blah. And it can it can definitely be a nice little ace to have in the back pocket um, when it comes to dealing with legislators. But uh, again, based mostly in education, mostly in community, which is something that I feel like, you know, the South definitely does have good community when it comes to their expos and, and their reptile community. Uh, but this is like a little bit more of a dress down version. You know, when you go to a reptile expo, a lot of people are focused on that bottom line, making sure they pay for their tables, making sure they pay for their hotel, for their gas, making sure that they make a little bit of money on the side. Um, and it can kind of be stressful for people. Whereas, uh, you know, you come to a Herb Society meeting, uh, you come, you hang out, you talk with people who are interested in reptiles, uh, you, you talk about the animals that you're interested in, you learn about, you know, something you might not know about. And that gives people a lot of opportunity uh, for growth. And um, it gives, you know, I don't think about myself as this person who's like, um, you know, this crazy rep. Like when people see me at an expo, sometimes people get all wigged out. They're like, Oh my God, you're the guy. And I'm like, I'm just another reptile dude, man. Like, and, and I like to be able to <laughs> pass down that like information and that, um, you know, what I learn, I like to share that with other people. And Herb Society is a great way for people who are more experienced to share knowledge and information with people who are less experienced and it's a it's less pressure than an expo it's less time crunch it's it's just a lot easier for people to um enjoy themselves and and um you know from from all walks of life so i'm that's kind of the way that i'm looking at it i don't know if everyone's looking at it that way but that's kind of how i'm approaching the carolina herb society and you know having uh re-energized the main herb society and being able to um help them organize a little bit better and advertise a little bit better, help them out a lot. I was the president of the main herb society for a year or two years or something like that. And, um, uh, you know, when you can have that opportunity for a community to come together, people show up, people want to learn, Absolutely. people want to do things. They want to experience reptiles. So, you know, um, being able to, to do that is, is really great. And then, you know, when we've got great people on board, like Josh, like Nick, like you, like me, like uh, Willie from Venom Central, um, who have got these amazing collections of reptiles for people to, you know, potentially learn from, it's, it's yeah. a recipe for a, a, a really good time. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, I, and I'll say I, I get really hyped when I see Rob at reptile shows, especially when he has pans of cupcakes. <laughs> i do get excited because he always brings me in right when we're all starting to get hungry so <laughs> everybody's getting that like one o'clock lag like they're like man it's lunch i haven't been able to leave from behind my table cupcakes yeah. <laughs> that's exactly it exactly it um so yeah so i see a bunch of people um making some comments about it um which which is wonderful we appreciate the the, the build up uh support there um, so ideally, uh, we'll be having a, our first board meeting in person board meeting at some point in February. Um, we've got to, we've got to plan that. Uh, and then after that, we can figure out when we'd have our first, uh, meeting as uh, open meeting, uh, as, as a larger herb society. And, uh, we'll make posts about that and we'll certainly talk about it here on the podcast. Um, so in yep. the meantime, go check out Carolina Herpetological Society on Facebook Give the page a like. Make sure uh, you, you're getting the notifications from it. Because um, uh, we... I, I, I was going to say, Willie from Venom Central said that he would be willing to host us for uh, one of our first meetings. So yes. if you want to see some amazing venomous reptiles, some really cool venomous snakes, he's got Bushmasters and everything, Gaboons, you know, you name it, he's got it. Yeah. Um, you know, Eyelash Vipers, also Bothrops, man, he's, yeah, got, he's got some, some amazing insane. animals. Yeah. Um, so he said that he's willing to host us for a meeting. Um, you know, so if you are interested in venomous reptiles, if you're somebody who thinks, eh, maybe they're not for me to keep, uh, but you still want to, see them in Same. person yeah. um you know sign up make sure that you uh, follow the the carolina herb society on facebook um i'll probably be sharing some of the information on my instagram as well i'm sure jeremy will as yeah. well 
Um, I'll, I might even share it on my personal Facebook page, uh, but I try and keep people, dude, I, I've found out that using my Facebook page to disseminate information through the reptile community works out pretty well. Yeah, no, it's true. It's true. And for anybody that's, that's interested, this will obviously end up on the Facebook page as well. Uh, but the board of directors, uh, is we have three, uh, BOD members in each state. Uh, so North Carolina is myself and Rob and uh aubrey aubrey pruitt um and then south carolina is uh josh nick and willie uh, from venom central uh so a seriously solid core of keepers um that that span quite a a range uh of keepers you know what we keep is is quite different uh on on all fronts pretty much from from retics to ridiculously amazing venomous reptiles to scrub pythons and borneos and bloods and then whatever the hell i have here and <laughs> um so Mex, Mex, King, yeah lots of mechs mechs kings <laughs> um but yeah so so plenty of you know that core i mean is is massive um you know because you you really do the, end up with a core of people that can seriously educate you know, a, a mm-hmm. responsible ownership, responsible keeping and, and and beyond, which is great. And exactly like Rob said, like, you know, an, an ARC source association is, is wonderful and certainly serves its purpose. Um, but and we experience this even with U.S. ARC as well in times when things are, you know, chill and nothing's really going on. Um, you know, unless you're totally invested in what's going on, it just kind of is out, like out on the fringe until something pops up and then it's all like laser focused. You know, it's and that's the that's the national organization, you know, so in a state where, you know, you might only have one or two things pop up every other year, yep. you know, it's it's harder to maintain those things. Even if you do try to put on events, you know, it's it's harder in between, you know, herb societies definitely offer a, a bit more flexibility there, um, you know, so it uh, it's it's quite wonderful um, and I'm very excited as well. <laughs> um, to get things rolling for this. So, yeah, please go check out that page, Carolina Herpetological Society, and uh, give it a like. Make sure you're getting those notifications because we'll be, we'll be sharing a lot uh, as time goes on this year um, about what's going on with that. And I, I want to do a lot of field herping this year. It needs to, needs to happen. Need, we need to make, some, make sure some things happen for sure. <laughs> yeah, dude. I, I, so um, for my birthday um, – Kristen, my girlfriend, got me this pretty amazing book. Oh, it's yes. uh, a guide to snakes in North Carolina, and it's got region maps for every species on here. Yes. And so I've been just like scouring this and then like plotting where I need to go to see what. So yes. um, we'll we'll be we'll be in contact. We're gonna see some stuff this year. That's what I'm talking about. Ah. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Heck yeah! yeah I'm man. so stoked. And also, of course, to be to be just in the South where there's so much cool stuff in general, you know, to be just a, a short distance away, half of the distance to like Florida and stuff that we were before, you know, to be able to get out and do some stuff out there. It's, it's going to be it's going to be great. <laughs> yeah, man. Things, things are going to be great. We don't have five months of frigid weather. It's It's winter right now and it's cold, but. It's to know it'll be all over in in less than sixty days is uh, yeah that's pretty quite, sweet quite nice <laughs> yeah dude New Year's Eve and New Year's Day I we found snakes out in the wild yeah. like we caught snakes yeah and we it's, saw salamanders both days nope yeah nope nope <laughs> nope yeah, I was also looking at uh, salamanders like different species of salamanders we got eastern tiger salamanders on the eastern coast of north carolina Ooh. big chunk like you know yes. 11 10 inch salamanders i was yes. like i need Bet. to go see some of those <laughs> Bet. it's on absolutely <laughs> yeah buddy yeah buddy <laughs> yes oh, man. are either of us going to be at tinley i will probably not be at march but i will be at october i i just started a new job or i'm just starting a new job i already told them i was like look weekend in october i'm not going to be here <laughs> yep <laughs> not going to be here don't forget about august i already did august i told okay, i literally good. told them i was like look uh you know probably last week in august uh, last weekend in august and then a week second week in october i am not going to i'm not going to be here uh, i'm going to be 
I'll be out. And they were like, that's fine. As long as we got a little bit of notice, that's fine. And I was like, yes, done deal. <laughs> <laughs> Heck yeah, dude. Yeah. And I'll, same thing. I won't, I will not be at March uh, at the March Tinley, but I will a hundred percent be at October. Um, potentially vending, but not a hundred percent sure. It all depends on what table availability is after March, but regardless, either way, I will be there. I'm excited. Um, heck yeah. Heck yeah. Um, all right, Rob. Yes. What are you most excited about this year? Seeing as how we'll, we'll be in North Carolina for a, a full year in 2020. Are you talking about future things or are you talking about stuff that i've seen on facebook recently no just fu- future things what are you what are you excited about just because you're here in north carolina this is this is not oh. the wrap-up question this is not the wrap-up okay. question at all. okay okay, I, okay, I'm, okay. Just, I, I'm just like what what are you what are you excited about dude okay <laughs> so there's a couple things there's so many species of venomous snakes down here i need to see <laughs> there's six species in north carolina i need to see at least four of them yeah, you know, versus our previous heads. only two, two, <laughs> and in, in New Hampshire, one. Um, right. <laughs> but uh, copperheads I can find in this county, just north of this county, there's a population of um, cane brakes, and then you really got to go south for like a little bit further south for your cottonmouths, um, coral snakes. You really got to go south, and uh, what else? Um, Totally blanket. The dusky pygmy rattlesnakes are southeast, and then eastern diamondbacks southeast. So I'm uh, I'm excited to find some of those. And then I've honestly I've been really pumped about finding marbled salamanders because they're endangered in New England. So like being able to just like flip a whole bunch of logs. I, we saw like maybe twenty marbled salamanders in one day once. It was crazy. I was losing my mind. i was so pumped um but i really want to see uh supposedly you can find coach whips in north carolina i would love to see a coach whip really i didn't know Uh, well that extended this far north that's Ah. what this says man it's uh it's not a a giant population but supposedly you can find them and then eastern chain kings you can find eastern chain kings around here and mole Mole king snakes dude Mm. yeah me listen all I'm saying is if we find where that population of coach whips is, the amount of, of terrible betting that will be going on on who can catch more coach whips. <laughs> Nobody will catch a single coach whip. Man, I remember herping down herping down in Florida coming across across coach whips. That that was that was the snake. If you wanted to try yeah. to catch a snake, you were gonna try to catch you were gonna try if you're talented, yeah. If yeah, you're talented, you're you can and catch go for it. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, southern part of this state. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to hit it, but. Oh, okay. All right. Wow, you can find them in Mecklenburg County and stuff. Interesting. Okay, yeah, buddy. So. I'm just uh, saying, I'm... you need to bring that book, or when I come out oh, here, we need to sit by like a fire, a campfire, and read yep. that book. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Oh, dude, I've already been like looking through it and just like scouring and looking at all the different counties in this area because I've done a lot of hiking in a lot of the different counties around this area. And I'm like, OK, so I could have found this here and this here and this here and this and that spot. So I, I'm just like trying to plot and then looking at the different habitats of the different species are found in. And I'm like, OK, this yeah. this summer it's going down. Heck it's going yeah. down. <laughs> Absolutely. I want to check off at least half this book from my list. <laughs> Hell yeah. I want to give a shout out because our sponsor is in the building. Black Box Cages and Racks is here. <clears throat> hey. um, what is up, guys? I, I don't know wh- who is, is on, on the other end, if it's uh, Clint or Jen. But <clears throat> but what's up, guys? Thanks for... Thanks Jeremy's for loving me. his new enclosures. I am. I am. You guys are awesome. I still. I also still have uh, three more to pick up. We can only fit seven in my car. <laughs> I thought I had. Uh, oh, it's both. Both of you guys are here. Awesome. Um, I, I thought that I had just enough space, but the the roof of my car is literally a half inch too close to be able to stack them on top of each other. So luckily, I'll be back in Georgia next week, so uh, so I can pick them up. Um, but yeah. <laughs> I was I was a little bummed, but it's okay. So I've got these. I've got five of them, or they're all set up. All seven of them that I brought are set up. I've got uh, five of them that are on. I uh, got their lights on. I gotta get one more uh, dimmer switch and splitter set, 
and then uh, those last three cages, and then bam, I can't wait to show them all off. So I'm going to do a YouTube yeah. video setting up one of the enclosures. Uh, that'll probably happen next week once I have them all done so I can show the whole wall of everything. Mm -hmm. but, but I'm stoked, and I just got those new lights in the reptile room, which means I can finally start making YouTube content. So, woohoo! It's going to be a lot of show and tell for a while because I haven't done a lot of YouTube stuff. So, <laughs> it's going to be a lot of show and tell. Uh, but I'm okay with that, and I hope everybody else is too. And if you're not, too bad. <laughs> uh, you just shout out to Dragon Whisperer uh, for the super chat. Much love and respect for keeping on top of these issues and sharing the knowledge with, with others. It's absolutely our pleasure, man. We need. We need to do this. We need to share uh, so people uh, are in the know about what's going on. It's very, very important, so we're happy to do it. Okay, Rob, it's question yeah. time. We're, we're wrapping it it's up. It's question so, time. I already know my answer, too. Th oh, perfect. Okay. So what in the realm of reptiles, Mr. Rob Christian, are you excited about reptiles? Dude, Nick Stacy, uh, Indicator Species uh, Project, he oh, yes. bred some green salamanders that are native to North Carolina. You can find oh. them way out in the mountains on the west side of the state. Oh. But, dude, he posted a video of these little green salamanders. And um, they're not, like, really small. I mean, they're three and a half, four inches, something like that. But he's got a, a pair of them in his hand, and he puts them into this moss, like, mountainside enclosure. And they literally hopped right off of his hand like a gecko, dude. I was like... Oh. Are you so kidding cool. me? These and then he <laughs> he bred them. He's been posting updates because what they do is when they lay their eggs, they like go underneath a little rock overhang mm -hmm. and they stick the cluster of eggs underneath the rock overhang and they hang down. And so the mm -hmm. mom comes through and like wraps her body around them to keep them moisturized and stuff. And then she cleans them and everything. And then he hatched out babies. And I was like, dude, these are. These salamanders Damn. are amazing, and I put those immediately on my list. Before I even saw that he had them, I, I put those on my list of things to find because you can find them in North Carolina in the mountains. So I was like, dude, I really need to see some. And then, boom, he's got some that he's working with, and then he bred them. And I'm like, dude, that is incredible. If you are, I think his Instagram is indicator species. Let me just make sure real quick. Hold on one second, one second, one second. Um, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> indicator underscore species nick stacy um and he's on on tiktok and all that sort of stuff too but he posted some really cool updates on the eggs and on the enclosure that he's got them in it's just like it's so cool looking uh that's dope. It's, too bright. it's 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 blurred out a little bit but that's dope yeah you can check it out on there Heck yeah. Really cool. I'm super pumped. Uh, like, I don't know if I would ever keep those just because you probably have to keep them in a room that's like 40 degrees. But <laughs> I, uh, I, I really am enjoying watching him work with them. And then he's okay. also one of the first people in the world to, I think in the world, it's definitely in the United States, who's bred the purple Harlequin toads. Um, Heck yeah. So that, that we sent, I sent him some uh, from Nerd. Uh, he bought some from Nerd. Adelopus species of, of toad and mm -hmm. he bred um, and produced some little froglets and he's just been continuously breeding them now so that's he's got some incredible animals just go check him out Nick Stacy hell yeah and Jeremy yes what in the realm of reptiles has oh. got you excited about reptiles around besides the black box cages because you just got <laughs> some amazing, amazing black box cages and then also hold on we gotta do we gotta shout out one more person too who Dominique DeFalco from yes. the Modern Medusa podcast. Yes. Um, big shout out to her. Uh, we're we're going to have a spot coming up on Reptile Talk, a little guest spot, um, just a little highlight for if you haven't checked her out. Um, Dominique DeFalco, she interviews women in the reptile hobby. Also, I think she does some of the other uh, niche surrounding hobbies as well. Um, yes, she's amazing. But specializes in interviewing women she's got an incredible podcast make sure you check it out if you've got some time uh, i listen to it i really enjoy her podcast um so go check it out yes. okay now Jeremy, me okay. what got you excited about reptiles right now okay so i am trying to find it right now so i say it right um so this this is this is super cool and i i'm i'm not a massive gecko guy these days 
Uh, however, this was this was a really cool. Um, was it the really Pachydactylus cool. rugosus? Uh, no, but that could actually be cool if it's something similar. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to find this video. I'm very concentrated at looking at Instagram to make sure I I say this gecko's name right. And I, is it Naltinus geckos? It. No. Um, oh God, dang it. <laughs> Um, well, okay, so the shout-out goes to, I'm sure if anybody's on TikTok or, or Instagram, they know exactly who I'm talking about, uh, Mason Barnes uh, for producing the uh, pseudo-gecko species, uh, which is the first time, or one of the first times they've been captive bred in, in the U.S. Uh, they're That's a, cool. a small species, a really unique-looking gecko. Um, it's got like this... I don't even really know how to describe the base color. It's like booger green. I don't know. That's what <laughs> booger green uh, with these uh, with these really cool black speckles uh, and the tail gets gets orangey. It's 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 a very interesting gecko. If you're if you're not following him already, check out uh, Mason Barnes, um, super popular uh, TikToker. Um, but he works with a lot of really cool. Uh, interesting species of reptiles and uh, does a lot of bioactive enclosures and stuff but uh he and i were talking uh a while back when he had like right around the time he had first gotten eggs uh from this pair and then he sent me pictures oh i know exactly what i see what you're talking about those are cool yes yes so just just one of those small little species of geckos that's that's super uncommon here in the states um i know uh, i i think he said there's two people or something that have bred them over in Europe. Uh, but these are some of the first captive bred babies in the States. Um, Dude, so, those are cool. Yeah, so it's pretty freaking sweet. And he do, he makes these really amazing enclosures. I, I talk to him from time to time and um, you know, I'm always like, Dude, your enclosure, like your concepts for your enclosures are, are great, you know. And because he works with a lot of these smaller gecko species, you know, he's, he's doing these cool living vivariums and bioactive enclosures in these, like, very easy-to-manage sized enclosures. <clears throat> um, you know, so for, for people who are interested in bioactive enclosures and setting stuff up maybe for dart frogs or some of these other, like, day gecko species and stuff like that, you know, he's got a really great uh, catalog of just different builds and stuff. So shout-out to you, Mason Barnes, for your cool geckos. <laughs> Heck yeah. Cool. Am so Rob, if people want to follow you and find out more about the wonderful things you're doing, where can they check you out? On Instagram at Rob is creeping it real. Um, maybe on YouTube. I'm thinking about doing a, a YouTube series on trying to train some of my scrubs um, because I've got some little ones that I'm hoping I can socialize a little bit better because two of them are not super loving me and uh, mm-hmm. one of them is amazing so <laughs> i think it would make an interesting uh you know little youtube series just to follow the progression of these animals as i socialize them as i work with them more and more and more um seeing if i can kind of gain over their trust uh or maybe not maybe they're just gonna be crazy their whole life so we'll see um what else what else what else not on facebook don't look me up on facebook i don't <laughs> I don't like that. Yeah, it's okay. Um, yeah, that's it. Just check me out on Instagram is the best place at Rob is creeping a real. And then check out, make sure you're following the Reptile Talk podcast on Instagram at reptile.talk. And then Jeremy, where are people going to look for you? People can find me everywhere because I'm a slave to social media. Uh, so <laughs> Facebook, uh, Facebook, you can find my, you can find me, Jeremy Turgeon, but please more so look up uh, Brassman Reptiles. And the Reptile Talk podcast uh, on Facebook now as well. <clears throat> um, check me out on uh, on Instagram at Brassman Reptiles, Twitter at Brassman Rep, uh, YouTube at Brassman Reptiles, which a lot of you guys are already watching on, which I appreciate. And uh, TikTok, too. I do do the talk from time to time <laughs> at Brassman Reptiles. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've got a TikTok, too. At Rob is creeping real. Bam. Find it, find us on the talk. <laughs> hey. uh, most of our social links are down in the video description, so feel free to click those links. Check us out. Make sure you follow us and do all that wonderful stuff. You guys rock. We'll see you next week. Uh, we'll be back to more regularly scheduled programming with cool guests 
uh, now that this is uh, has passed. And once we hear more, uh, we'll come and revisit. And I'll, I'll probably keep try you to, informed. Yeah, we'll probably try to get Phil in for that as well. So, yeah. uh, boom, that's it, guys. That'll be see it. See you later.